Welcome to my lecture online. In this case, we're going to take a look at a beam and establish what the normal and shear stresses are on the beam. Now, first of all, we're simply pulling with a force of 600 newtons in a negative x direction on this beam. This beam is attached to a wall right over here. Notice that the cross section of the beam is 5 centimeters by 5 centimeters. And we're going to imagine a imaginary cut in the beam, a location in the beam where we're going to establish the stress. In this case, we're going to see if the cut is perpendicular to the, or parallel to the cross-section area of the beam, then you can see that the stress here is what we call a normal stress. We have a force pulling this way and a normal force pulling in the opposite direction to oppose this so that the two forces together add up to zero which causes what we call a normal stress. And the normal stress can be defined as the normal force divided by the cross-sectional area. So it would be 600 newtons divided by 0 0.05 meters times 0 0.05 meters, which ends up being 240 kilopascals. But what if we imagine an imaginary cut or an imaginary cross-section that is angled at 30 degrees relative to the vertical? You can then see that there's going to be a normal response to the force, normal to that surface, and a parallel force. These two forces together will add up to the normal force opposing the force that's pulling on the beam in this direction. So this F sub n here is the same as F sub n over here, which is going to be equal to 600 newtons, but that's going to be divided into a perpendicular component and a parallel component of that imaginary cross-section. And notice since it's angled at 30 degrees, the normal force here will be angled at 30 degrees and the shear force will be angled at 30 degrees. Now, how can we determine what the normal force and the shear force is? Well, you can go ahead and add up all the forces in the x direction. So we have a negative 600 newtons in this direction plus the shear force component in the x direction, which would be the, sh the shear force times the cosine of 60 degrees. And that would be the x component of the normal force, which is the normal force times the cosine of 30 degrees, and all those must add up to zero. Then we take, up, then we take all the force in the y direction, which would be the shear force times the, well in this case it would be the sine of 60 degrees, it would be the opposite side to the angle, so it would be this force times the sine of 60, which is the component in the perpendicular direction this way, and then we subtract from that the normal force times the sine of 30, which gives you this y component of the normal force. Add these two together, you get zero as well. And then what you could do is you could solve these two, force, these two equations simultaneously to solve for the shear force and to, shear for, and to solve for the normal force. It's not that hard to do. But what we could also do is we could rotate our axes instead of using the y axis and the x axis, we can use a rotated axis so that the y prime axis is parallel to the slanted surface and the x prime axis is perpendicular to the slanted surface. Now let's go ahead and add up all the forces in the x prime direction and all the forces in the y prime direction. So in the x prime direction, we have the 600 Newton force, but we have to multiply that times the cosine of 30 degrees in order to find the perpendicular component to the slanted surface. So it's minus 600 times the cosine of 30. And then you see that since the shear force is parallel to the surface, it doesn't have any perpendicular components. We only have this component, which is perpendicular. And so we have to take, we have to add the normal force, which is completely perpendicular to the surface. Those two together add up to zero. Then we can add up all the forces in the y prime direction. Notice we take the 600 Newton force and we we'll multiply times the sine of 30 to get the parallel component and it's going to be in the negative direction. Notice that this force is pointing this way, so it's in the negative direction relative to the y prime. Let me go ahead and, and write that one in. So here's the 600 Newton force. Force equals 600 Newtons. And so you can see that in order to get the y component or the y prime component, it will be in the negative direction. It will be an angle of 30 degrees. So we take the sine of 30 times 600 Newtons to get the y prime component, which is right here. And then we have the positive component in the positive y prime direction, F sub s. And then you can see that very easily you can solve for the normal force and you can solve for the, the shear force uh, along that slanted side. 
Notice the normal force would then be 519.6 newtons and the shear force would be 300 newtons, sine of 30 being one half. And then finally, we can calculate the shear stress. The shear stress, by definition, is going to be the shear force divided by the cross-sectional area. So the shear force we determined was 300 newtons. The cross-sectional area, well, this side here is still going to be 5 centimeters, but the slanted side, we need to take 5 centimeters and divide it by the cosine of 30 to get the length of this side right here. So you can see that the total cross-sectional area for the shear force is a little bit bigger than 0.05 times 0.05. Then we take the 300 newtons divided by the cross-sectional area of the slanted surface and we get the shear force of 104 kilonewtons. Notice the shear force will be in this direction and that comes from applying a force in this direction on the beam when we take into account the cross-sectional area of the slant of 30 degrees relative to the vertical. So that's why whenever we pull on a beam and we want to consider a cross-section area which is not perfectly perpendicular, then we don't only have the normal stress, we also have what we call the shear stress. And the shear stress can be determined F sub S the way we showed you right here. And that is how it's done.